Greetings, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I would like to discuss the recent floods which have hit Libya, claiming the lives of thousands of people. Family, recently there was an unprecedented amount of rain in Libya, and this rain actually culminated in a dam bursting. Okay, and as this dam burst, Water flooded the streets of Libya, toppling buildings, drowning people in water and mud. You know, currently, people of Libya are engaged in humanitarian aid, uh, trying to care for the victims, search for any survivors. Okay. And firstly, let me say my heart goes out to the people of Libya who have lost their lives in this flood and I hope that those who have survived can piece their lives back together expeditiously. You know, and in this video I would like to discuss something that has been happening in Arab states in Africa for decades. Okay, I'm speaking about the abuse of black African migrants which has been taking place for years on the continent of Africa. Now family, if you do a quick Google search, you will be surprised to find countless photos of Africans in handcuffs being detained by Arab soldiers in Algeria, in Tunisia, in Libya, and also in Egypt, you know, each of these Arab ethno states have had a history of abusing African migrants, torturing them, performing surgeries on them for some reason, and forcefully expelling them from their borders. All right, and for a long time, there's been a talk about North Africa versus sub-Saharan Africa you know and people have made sub-Saharan Africa synonymous with black or dark skin and North Africa synonymous with light skin or with Arab influence you know and in my opinion family we have had an issue with the proliferation of Arab ethno states on the continent of Africa you know before I even heard about Muammar Gaddafi, or before I actually saw a photo of him, I should say, I had no idea that Gaddafi was of Arab descent. You know, because people would speak about Gaddafi in the same breath as Nelson Mandela, Kwame Nkrumah, Haile Selassie, Jomo Kenyatta, etc. You know, and so in the minds of impressionable persons like myself, I always assumed that Gaddafi was another one of the pantheon of African liberators. I was surprised to find that when I first saw a photo of him, that he was very visibly of Arab descent, you know, and yet still I still sympathize with Gaddafi when America did a, a missile strike and took his life, you know, because as I said, he's always been mentioned with many of the pantheon of African revolutionaries and African liberators, you know, but family, Muammar Gaddafi is not African, you know, Muammar Gaddafi, like many other Arab sultans and rulers, on the continent of Africa have amassed obscene amounts of wealth from African resources and have flaunted their wealth and maintained the demographics of majority Arab by any means necessary. All right, and so although we may have solidarity with them because they share the land with us at this time, we have to remember that 
they are also abusing African migrants and treating Africans like they don't belong on the continent of Africa, particularly in the northern region. Okay, and so I wasn't surprised recently when I saw that acts of nature, um, natural disasters, um, political chaos are currently gripping the African Arab states at this time. Okay, like I said, I sympathize with any loss of life, but when we consider that these Arab states have been perpetuating a campaign of abuse against our people, we have to wonder if there is true solidarity on the continent of Africa with respect to these Arab states. Okay, and I looked at some paintings from the region of Tassili in Algeria. And the ancient people made sure that they left their legacy in art form for successive generations to know who they were. And these people very clearly painted themselves with African skin, African facial features, and African hair. All right, doing the things that people in the continent would have been doing around that time. Depicting themselves with bows and arrows, spears, and the uh, indigenous African animals. All right, so we find that there's been a campaign of erasure along with the displacement in North Africa. And I would just like to say that if these countries claim to be proud of their African heritage or African identity, quote unquote identity, okay, why is the president of Tunisia claiming that black Africans moving to Tunisia is somehow a, a plot to change their demographics, a plot to change the, the makeup of their society. All right. Did you all know that in Tunisia is where you will find the relics of Carthage? This is where Hannibal is from. All right. So are you saying Hannibal is, is not black? Are you saying that Hannibal is white? Are you saying that Hannibal was of Arab descent? You know, we know that Hannibal is a great black general who actually defeated the Romans in a particular battle. Um, the ruins of Carthage are in Tunisia. So how is the president of Tunisia claiming that Africans don't belong there? All right, this reminds me of our recent issue with Egypt. Um, knowing that they invaded Egypt in 639 AD, but they are now claiming that they were the ancient Egyptians, and that is their history. Okay, so what we find is that psychopathic racism is still alive and well on the continent of Africa, and indeed around the world. Family, let me know your thoughts in the comments below about all these dynamics. One love.